Hello, friends. Welcome back to Love Wrestling. Spencer Love here getting the opportunity to chat to another member of not only Ring of Honor's finest, but in this guy's humble opinion, one of Ring of Honor's finest factions. Try saying that five times fast. Of all time, hot sauce Tracy Williams, of course, of the foundation joining me. It's great to have you on, man. An exciting time for Ring of Honor, and I feel like I've been able to say that for about the last year. How are you doing? How are things on the precipice of uh, a big match coming up on the 23rd? Um, everything's great. It's a beautiful day here in New York City. I'm feeling good. And yeah, I mean, it's an exciting time for Ring of Honor and an exciting time for wrestling in general. Um, so that just, you know, can't complain about that. Absolutely, man. Like you mentioned, an exciting time for yourself personally. Yourself and John Gresham are going to be taking on the team of Violence Unlimited this weekend on the 23rd. It will be airing. Just take me through your thoughts on that, because over the last little bit, you guys have been feuding with LFI and have sort of transitioned over to a very different style, but equally talented uh, tag team in their own right. Take me through a little bit of that. And maybe is there a bit of a different mental preparation you're doing or uh, approaching this match with versus uh, maybe the last little bit? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, we knew when we started the foundation that this was going to be how it is, where no matter where we turn, there's going to be another group or another person who disagrees with what we want to see out of Ring of Honor. And they want to force their image of Ring of Honor upon us and upon everybody else. And that's just the name of the game. And so we knew what we were in for, but like you said, we've been struggling with LFI for a long time. And it's definitely a different preparation going up against Violence Unlimited because with LFI, they're, they're known cheaters. They don't care about the rules. They're, they're that kind of wrestler where you have to prepare for people coming in with chairs and you know them using the wires from the cameras and all that stuff. I know that Violence Unlimited is a little more confident in their actual skills in the ring. They may not have the same style as the foundation. They may not have exactly a pure style, so to speak, but we know that we're, we're in for a wrestling match one way or another, and we're in for a fight at the same time. So in that way, I prefer it. And I love fighting those violence unlimited guys because it's just a clash of wrestling styles rather than a clash of wrestling versus something else as it is with LFI. Mm -hmm. And I love it, man. Even going through and doing my research and listening to interviews of yours prior, that's been really consistently your approach to pro wrestling is let's not get the who's it's and what's it's galore involved. Let's go out there and prove who's the best professional wrestler. How cool is it for you that obviously re-signing about 10 months ago at this point, you're in an environment that's about the most conducive to that in professional wrestling at this point. Yeah, I, I think it definitely is. And I think it's, you know, a lot of luck got me here, but also I think it just makes sense in a way where this is kind of where I always saw myself one way or another. You okay. Know, there were where, you know, when you're starting out, you don't really see that as a reality, but if somebody was to ask me, what kind of wrestling do you see yourself doing? What, what, where do you see yourself ending up? You know, ideally it would have been ring of honor. And so uh, it means a lot. And yeah, I think it's still the place where you, you know, you got the most opportunity to really, get by on your wrestling but mm -hmm. i think we've still got a ways to go as far as getting ring of honor back to being the place where people come to see that wrestling and they know for sure that it's going to be there and so that's what the foundation is all about is bringing ring of honor back to that you know reestablishing that image and rebuilding ring of honor in you know the image that made it what it is mm -hmm. uh it's still the place for it and we're just trying to you know take that to the next level and create a new ring of honor that can you know honor the ring of honor of the past and even build on it and make it better as we go forward. I love to hear that, man. What do you think? Again, you're, you're a historical fan of ring of honor as well as one of their professional wrestlers as well. Right now, what do you think allowed ring of honor maybe in the early days and now to separate because you've wrestled for Chikara and evolved two promotions that as well are, are very well known for the wrestling ability of its wrestlers to phrase that weirdly on my end, but what really allowed ring of honor? Like I've said, and you've said yourself like to plant their flag as the wrestling promotion. Um, I mean, that's a good question. I think the, the thing about all those different places was that they all kind of had their own distinct flavor, even though they were, you know, all focused on in-ring competition a lot. Like, you know, they kind of catered to different fans. Um, mm -hmm. Where Chikara was a little more over the top with the characters and, you know, catered to more of like a comic book or kind of casual fan. And, and that was great. And then with Evolve, I think that 
Evolve kind of had sort of the idea that I think the foundation has now where they looked at what Ring of Honor, what they saw that was special about Ring of Honor and wanted to recreate it. Um, and it's a hard thing to do. And so I, I think that that just even points the light more at the fact that, you know, Ring of Honor is, was like the premier place and is the premier place in the States for professional wrestlers. I think a lot of that has to do with uh, being in the right places. Like the fact that Ring of Honor um, has, you know, a foothold in New York, Work. You know, like Ring of Honor is the, the first company, I think, since WWE for like decades to run Madison Square Garden when we did with New Japan a couple of years ago. And even before that, I mean, go right around the corner from Madison Square Garden and Ring of Honor was in the Manhattan Center in the Hammerstein Ballroom, you know, month after month and year after year. And if it's, it's such a cliche, so corny, but like if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. So I think that has a lot to do with Ring of Honor's success and with their cred is that, you know, they, they go out there in front of the toughest fans in the world and succeed. I agree, man. And, you know, not uh, brown nose by any means, but that's my job as an interviewer. I think with a, a stable like the foundation is a part of it, you're well on your way, if not already there as far as that goes. Right now, for the first time in a long time, making some additions over the last little bit. Talk to me a little bit about uh, Chris Ridgway and what inspired you guys to invite him to be a part of the foundation. It's an exciting development, I think, because, uh, I mean, I know I agree with Gresham on this, that we don't see the foundation as just like a faction and ring of honor. We know that like, if we're going to stand by our ideals and our vision of wrestling, that we want to find the people all across the world who agree with that and get the most power and the most momentum behind that, that we can. So to now see that coming into fruition and seeing people from all over, not just in ring of honor, being welcomed in and being acknowledged as people who can carry that flag and represent what the foundation is all about is super exciting. I think Chris Ridgway is a great example of that. He's a great first step in that process. And I mean, I'm just excited to see who else pops up and who else we can make connections with mm -hmm. and, you know, share that ideal, share those ideas between each other, you know, and, and all that. So it's exciting. It's definitely exciting. Then it's safe to say, because you did an interview a few months ago with uh, WrestleZone, I think it was, where you talked about a phase two of the foundation, where phase one was establish, establish yourselves and win all the championships. And now it's, it's looking like you're moving into that phase two of recruiting. Obviously, you kick it off with Ridgeway, but without giving away the farm, is there anybody else that maybe you would specifically be looking at to bring into the foundation, whether with Ring of Honor right now or... Uh, crossing the proverbial forbidden door <laughs> yeah I mean, if you start thinking about all the doors you could go through all the bridges that you could cross i mean there are tons of people i think it's no secret i've always been a huge supporter of wheeler utah uh always been a huge supporter of fred yehi these are both guys that i've teamed with you know many other places and uh you can hear that motorcycles probably shooting by as they go down <laughs> my street here in new york um but i think it would be great to see uh, people of all different kinds and all different genders represent the foundation because, you know, there are great technical wrestlers across all, you know, spectrums of human existence. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Nicole Savoy. Uh, she's a great technical wrestler. Uh, I think she would be, you know, I'd be proud to have her carrying that flag. And um, yeah, there's a couple names that I could think of, but there are people of all kinds all across that, you know, we've got our eyes on. Everybody, of course, has asked you, and rightfully so, by this point about the Pure Tournament. I did want to ask you about the women's tournament. You mentioned Savoy, but you look at Roxy and Chelsea Green and Miranda Alize and the great women coming into Ring of Honor right now. How cool is that to be part of the promotion when, again, they're really starting to make major, major steps forward in that department? It's great. And, I mean, I think Roxy is a great first champion because – she kind of reminds me of the old ring of honor in the way where she's somebody who is going to go all around the world and, and keep building her career as she continues to do independent promotions and carry the ring of honor flag everywhere she goes. And she's even defending that ring of honor women's championship on these outside shows, which I think is great. And it's giving opportunities to people who haven't like, you know, had the opportunity to come into ring of honor to now get that spotlight on them and get those eyes on them where you know the powers that be are looking at these title matches and seeing all these new faces um really stepping up and so i think that that's really great and i mean i think you know we're just it hasn't happened yet but i'm waiting to see the first women's pure wrestling match in ring of honor i think that you know that's we, we got to be the place to do that and uh, i think it's only a matter of time 
I agree, man. And how much pride did you transition me nicely on this one? How much pride do you take being a part of the first ever pure rules tag team match with Rhett Titus? Yeah, no, I, I love stuff like that because I think that there is still so much to be done in wrestling just as far as experimenting with different match types and rule sets and that sort of thing where uh, I think, you know, it's easy to settle into a pattern of wrestling and, and fall into the same kind of tropes over and over again. But when you're forced to work within a different set of rules and work within a different structure, it opens your brain up a little bit and, um, you know, gets the ideas flowing. So the pure tag match was definitely like that. And I've done a couple of them since where you can't rely on the same tactics that you've always relied on in tag matches, you know, like breaking up pins and stuff. It's just not an option to just throw out there all the time. And so you need to be careful with the decisions you make on the apron and not putting your team at risk. And, you know, I think it just adds an extra level of danger to the match and, and some nice things to think about without getting too complicated, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's great. I completely agree. Talk to me a little bit about Rhett Titus specifically, because when I spoke with him, like it's again, a pretty easy answer and it's pretty easy to see as a fan that you guys just have something there, whatever that may be. So as the guy inside the ring, maybe give me a little bit of insight into what makes you guys so special as a tag team. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of cool. I find it very interesting because we definitely do have something, but I'm trying to remember as I speak, I think that that pure tag team match on the final battle was that was Rhett and my first time teaming together as a tag team. Mm -hmm. um, and I, know, I mean, we instantly felt that we had something and we were talking about it. I think part of that is that we both had, you know, pretty long careers at this point and we've been tag team wrestlers for so much of that career where I think now we're at a point where we are, we can just get plugged in with, you know, anybody who's good and it'll fit, which is really nice to know. Um, that all those years of tag team wrestling, you know, Rhett's a former Ring of Honor tag team champion before we were. I was a former Evolve tag team champion, AIW tag team champion. I've done a lot of tag wrestling. And it's nice that that has now got me to a point where um, in our first match teaming together, I think we looked like, you know, somewhat of a tag team. So it's nice. And, and now we're trying to build on that even more. It's like if you can start there, then there's no way to go but up, really. So it's great. Yeah. When you hear the phrase tag team specialist, is that something you take pride in? Does it maybe give you a chip on your shoulder? Because you mentioned all your tag team runs, but, you know, take some pride in the fact you've done a damn good job as a singles guy before too, right? So yeah. what are your feelings when you hear that? Yeah, uh, it doesn't doesn't really bump me because I, I think it's it, – it, some of the best matches ever have been tag matches. You know, I was just watching some um, – AJPW uh, tag match from like the early nineties, I think with, you know, four of the best wrestlers ever. And they're, you know, it was an awesome tag match. And so it doesn't really bump me. Um, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I think that I'm a little, I'm confident enough to not feel like I'm being pigeonholed or anything like that when I'm in a tag team, because it's a great match structure. It adds something to a show. You know, I think that if you are in a tag team, you're something different right away where, mm -hmm. you know, they, if a promoter has seven singles matches already and you are a nicely packaged tag team, boom, there's your in right there. So I, yeah, no problem with that, really. I'll be a tag team specialist if, if that's the role. You know? <laughs> a five tool player, I think they call it in baseball. But let me tell you, if you think I would be a bad pro wrestler, you should have seen me play baseball. <laughs> and evidently, obviously, other people are noticing how great you are, man. Number 90 on the PWI 500. Is that cool for you? Does that mean a lot? You get a, a lot of different reactions from pro wrestlers and people in the business when you talk about uh, uh, rankings and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and, and I get that. Um, and I've kind of been that guy here and there where it's once you're like so deeply actually in wrestling, you do kind of see those things differently, um, especially with, you know, there's sometimes some questionable decisions on those lists. And sometimes people are just totally left off. It definitely should have been on. So I understand why people have their issues with it, but it's one of those things where you have to kind of step back and look at it as like, you know, this is really cool. Like if, you know, if I wasn't, me now if I was me you know as a kid and I knew that I was going to be you know on this list and and seen in this way and a part of this like that's that's pretty cool and um so I, yeah I, I just try to like look at things that way and, and not be bitter um and just like take them for what they are which is you know it's it's nice to just be a part of that it's like it's it's kind of legitimizing in a way even though it's like 
not a legit list. You know, it, it's weird in that way. Like, it's not <laughs> really like kind of a goofy list, but at the same time, it's very legitimizing to, to be a part of it. And, and I think a lot of people feel that way. Yeah. Very cool to hear, man. Before we close it out with a quick game, I want to ask the fan questions that we got in, starting off with what are you playing on the Switch lately? Oh, wow. Um, on the Switch, I played Mario Golf for a little while. Uh, that was pretty good. And I just downloaded the new Metroid, but I haven't played it yet. Um, yeah. For that, a lot of Hades, put a lot of hours into Hades. That was good. And uh, prior to that, I mean, for like most of the pandemic, my Switch was just an Animal Crossing machine. I think there's- Oh man, like, right? <laughs> something in on that. Um, so yeah, that, that's the list right there. Yeah. We could do an entire separate podcast on like the trials and tribulations of Animal Crossing through a pandemic. Frickin' start a series on that one, hey? Um, the differences between the New York indie scene between when you started and where it's sort of at now? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think it's- in certain ways much better right now. It, it, it's odd because I think it's a, it's a lot better than it was when I started in that, I mean, I just, I go and I work out at this school T2T in, um, in Brooklyn that's like in like actual Brooklyn, like, and it's like an actual school where you can actually sign up and like get good training. And that was kind of unheard of in New York for a while. Like there were schools, mm. but you know, a lot of them were very old school um or kind of hard to access and this is like a very welcoming environment and a very like you know they, they let they let me come in and, and work with their students and everything and it's it's really nice to see that happening in new york because i feel like for a long time you had to step out of the new york bubble to kind of get that and you mm -hmm. also had to step out of the new york bubble to kind of get noticed and, and get something going like when i started i trained in philadelphia and i went to philadelphia you know every week to train because I just didn't see the opportunity in New York that I think maybe there is now. And so I think mm -hmm. it's, it's moving in a good direction, which is not to take anything away from the New York, you know, wrestlers of the past. I think there are some of the best indie wrestlers in the world came out of New York, but that's the thing is that they had to come out of New York to get that going. So I would like mm -hmm. to see that shift continue to change where, you know, people can really thrive in their own environment in New York. But a lot of that is up to the athletic commission, really. It's just hard to run a show here. It's way too expensive. And, you know, I think there's a lot of reasons why the scene here isn't what it could be in a person. Mm -hmm. It isn't for a lack of talent, but there are barriers there, it sounds right. like. Yes. Makes complete sense. Now, one I'm certain you may have got before, but let's do right by the fans. What's your go-to hot sauce? Oh, okay. I mean, I do like the basic stuff because it's usually what's available. And so, you know, I, I got no problem with the basics, no problem with the Taco Bell stuff. Uh, I, as far as Taco Bell goes, I do think that fire is better than Diablo um, because none of them are hot anyway. So you just got to pick the one that tastes the best, which I think is fire. Uh, other than That's that, a proverbial I, hot take. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> no, I deserve all the shame for that one. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but other than that, I mean, there's, you know, local places that, that used to be by me where I lived in Brooklyn that have some really good stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of always my answer, but it takes so long to say. It's like, a, it's like a little local place that they don't even bottle it and sell it. They just have like this really good tasting hot sauce that's amazing. Other than a hidden that, gem. Uh, yeah, a hidden gem that, but other than that, I got no problem with the basics, really. I'm not a, I'm not like a hot sauce snob or anything, you know. Completely fair. You've told the story a ton and, and there are a lot of great podcasters out there who have heard the story. So I ain't going to ask for the entire, but what was it about hot sauce that stuck when you and Chuck and everybody were going back and forth in that group text? Cause like, I think it was the art of wrestling. He was talking about it on and like cool dad, cool dad, Dan Crenshaw would have <laughs> been my personal <laughs> pick, but, uh, but what was it about hot sauce that, uh, that stuck for you? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it's kind of like how with nicknames, you never really get to pick your own nickname because, you know, <laughs> be like the destroyer or like the, you know, the, the coolest guy in the world. But um, yeah, you don't really get to pick it. So it, it just kind of landed on me. And uh, I, I think it kind of started as a joke where I, I think it, at the time I was looking for a name um, because I was going to change my name and I needed a new name. And everything I came up with sounded too like on the nose cool, you know, with like all the cool letters, like K's and V's and all that shit. 
Um, but I, it, I didn't, it, none of it felt real. And so it just was like kind of a natural thing where we were throwing all these names around and that one kept jumping out to me. So I was like, you know, screw it. Like, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to, I'm going to take this one from this weird list and I'm going to show that, you know, a name is just a name and you can get by on, on what you do. And I like to think that I've done that. I mean, I've had, I've had people when I first started using that name, tell me like, oh, you got to drop this name. Like, it's ridiculous. Like people in like high positions in like, you know, that I respect their opinion, but I was just like, no, I'm going to make it work. So, yeah. Well, and it transitions nicely again. Like I said, we're going to close her out for a quick game. And you said that people can't pick their own nicknames. So you and I are going to do it. First to come to mind, I don't, I don't want to call it word association, but you're going to give a few more nicknames out here on this end of things, okay. starting with John Gresham. Oh, wow. The wide man. I got to go wide man. Wide man John Gresham because that he just gets wider and wider. <laughs> he's gonna, like he's not going to be able to fit through doors soon. He's just like the delts <laughs> keep growing and growing. So yeah, the like I could man. that guy could kill a brick is the best way that I can absolutely put it. Yeah. Ian Riccoboni. Ooh, I mean, it's cool. Dad jumps back into my head. Cool, Dad Ian Riccoboni. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that cool, Dad vibes. Yeah. Works great for me, man. Ring of Honor Women's Champion, Roxy. Hmm. Okay. Roxy. Uh, I don't know. I'm, just, I'm thinking Roxy Maivia. I'm thinking Dwayne the Roxy Johnson. Um, <laughs> winners. Absolute winners on this end of things. Now you can either go individually or rename the OGK here, but Mike Bennett and Matt Taven. Okay. Mad Mike Bennett and mean Matt Taven. Excellent. Coming right out of the eighties. Orange Cassidy. Oh man. Uh, All I can think of is a story. It's not, I'm, I'm stepping away from the game. All I can think of is a story where uh, before Orange Cassidy was big, famous superstar Orange Cassidy, he was doing like an enhancement talent job uh, for a certain uh, successful company. Uh, and um, the ring announcer it, like really didn't want to say his, his nickname, his actual nickname. Um, and then he, on top of that, uh, Orange Cassidy was making his entrance and at this time I mean you know he, he takes a while to get into the ring it takes him a little while and he was doing that and he was doing his thing but it, it, he wasn't the superstar that, that we know today like I was saying so the ring announcer was just kind of like what the hell is this guy doing like you're like the enhancement talent get in the ring and uh, he's like off the mic like telling him like get in the ring, get in the ring. And, and Orange Cassidy's like, you, you got to say my name. You got to say my name. So, so ring announcer, like, Freshly squeezed Orange <laughs> Cassidy. Yeah. And yeah, so, you know, who, who would have thunk it? Too casual to re-nickname and you get a great story to boot out of it. Well, then I am going to make one more come out of you and it will be relevant to your match coming up this week on the 23rd. Brody King and Chris Dickinson. Mm. Well, Chris Dickinson's already the dirty daddy. So let's go with creepy uncle Brody King and the dirty daddy. <laughs> if that ain't convincing enough for you guys to tune into next week's Ring of Honor presentation, I don't know what will because you got great nicknames and you got great professional wrestling courtesy of the foundation and hot sauce, Tracy Williams specifically. It's been great, man. Thank you so, so much for the time. And if people want to check you out online or keep up to date with the latest and greatest from Hot Sauce, how can they do so? Um, I'm on, you know, Twitter and Instagram as sauce underscore Williams. Uh, look out for photos of my dog, uh, photos of me and my dog, um, photos of my dog and other dogs. <laughs> much more expertise these days. So, yeah, sauce underscore Williams on all that stuff. And, you know, check out Ring of Honor. The TV's free. You don't even need to have TV to watch it. It's on the Ring of Honor website. Free for you to watch every week. 
whenever you want. It's up all week. So check it out and watch live with us at seven o'clock on Mondays as we all kind of tweet along and watch the show. I highly recommend it, folks. You want to support great professional wrestling. You want to support great people. And there are a ton of them in Ring of Honor. And if you want to keep up with some of them, including, of course, the hopeful wink, wink, nudge, nudge next appearance of hot sauce Tracy Williams on the show. Give a follow, a like, a share, a subscription, a Yelp review, whatever's out there to love it. Wrestling CA, wherever audio is played and video is viewed. For Hot Sauce Tracy Williams, I've been Spencer Love. We'll catch you on the next one.